Hello, my dear church boys, and welcome back to St. Robert's Day Game Pickup Podcast. And in this podcast episode, we're talking about the differences between day gaming, average, and hot girls. So what are the differences in meeting them, in day gaming, in a seduction process, and in dating them? And this podcast episode, I recorded with James Tusk for his, po- his, for his podcast, but I'm cross-posting this for my audience as well. The most important of the housekeeping items before we get into the topic is uh, our I'm leaving Mexico pretty soon in a few days and I can fly either via New York City or with a Switzerland. So and if I fly via Switzerland, I can actually do some coaching in Switzerland because if I would be in Schengen area right now, I couldn't really go to Switzerland because it, I would have to self-isolate for two weeks. Whereas now, if I'm going straight from Mexico, there is I can get in, there is no isolation. So I can actually enter Switzerland and coach there. So if you're from Switzerland and are interested in some infield, infield coaching, send me a message. And an important thing is, I actually used to live in Germany, so I understand some German, so I will be able to understand most of what you're doing in your day game sets, even if they are in German. Knowing how strict the COVID restrictions right now are in Europe are, I think this is the only opportunity I will have this year to go to Switzerland. So seriously, if you are from Switzerland and want to get some coaching, send me an email now to robert at strobert.blog. It is robert at strobert.blog. And regardless of whether I fly via US or whether I fly via Switzerland, I will be in, in Belgrade, Serbia for several days later this month so I can again coach some students and whether that's for just day game coaching or day game plus dating coaching. And I'll be again available for coaching in Serbia in April for a few students. And again, if you want to know more, just send me an email and I'll send you all the details, the, the dates, the prices, etc. And if in general you're interested in coaching and want to know the cities I'm going to, then actually both Switzerland and Serbia have been announced a while ago to my mailing list. So make sure you are on a mailing list. Just go to my website, stroberd.blog, and sign up for the mailing list there. And also in the welcome email, you'll get an invitation link to join our day game church telegram group chat where we have around 200 guys from all over the world. So whether you want to talk about game, ask some questions or find wings in different cities wherever you travel to, that's the place to look for all of that. And now let's get down to the topic of dating average versus very hot girls. Um, And on that note, today's topic will be uh, the difference in gaming. We, we, I mean, uh, I don't think either of us consider ourselves pickup artists, which is a kind of cheesy old school, but I mean, I, d- I don't like to use this kind of terminology, but I guess gaming sixes and sevens, average girls versus gaming those really, really attractive hot girls, those tens. Um, and we're going to go into detail about maybe some myths, some uh, legends, some, some untruths, some truths about the whole process of that. Um, but how should we kick things off? I mean, how would you like to start this? What are the kind of opening gambits we should be talking about? Well, why are we learning day game? Why are guys learning day game? Because uh, they are used to doing online dating, social circle, maybe some drunk game. But uh, what they end up doing is they end up kind of sleeping with girls that they wouldn't necessarily watch that type of girl on 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 those uh, private browsing sites. They would they would look for something hotter on private browsing sites, where in reality they're sleeping with girls from online and and other girls that aren't like the girls they dream about and we're learning this to or, or guys are learning this to to sleep with their dream girl with those really hot russians with those really hot serbians with those really hot brazilian chicks uh, so we we have to understand that that's why we're learning uh, well, but, that's why uh, that's why we that's why we got into it for certain i can completely agree with that like when i got into this i was like i want to sleep with the creme de la creme you know that's why i want to do this it's because yeah, I just hadn't, I've slept with a fair few women before getting into day game, but there'd never been any particular, you know, quality or, or attractiveness. It was very much me being chosen by the girl, and the girls were very average looking. So for sure, I completely agree that the, the point of getting into this for me was to really sleep with the, the hottest girls possible. And I think it's easy to somehow forget that as well. You forget why you're doing this sometimes, and it's a uh, you know, you get a lot of side benefits, don't you, from learning day game. You become a, uh, more emotionally and socially intelligent. You learn to face your fears. You start to travel. Um, you, there's a number of benefits to learning it, sort of side benefits. But really, the reason most of us get into it, or 
you know, the, the guys who are honest who are admitting why they get into it because they want to sleep with, with, with more attractive girls, right? Definitely. And uh, when, when guys go out, especially on their own, uh, we have this joke that there are two types of girls. There, is, there are ones that are too hot to open and too ugly to open. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so fr from, a, from a beginner's point of view, should he be focusing on, um, you know, it doesn't really matter if the girl isn't attractive um, it, because he just needs to put in the volume or you think he should be deliberately targeting the hottest girls to start with? What would be your advice for a newbie getting into this? Uh, open anything that moves and, and <laughs> isn't too ugly because you you can't start learning and expect to to just go for the hottest girls open everyone but definitely open all the hottest girls you see as well uh, yeah for a lot of guys hottest girls are the scariest that's where they're that's when their voice starts shaking or or their hands start shaking i remember even this last summer less less than a year ago i i saw this incredibly hot chick i've seen i've seen her on instagram she's like an instagram chick and popular on instagram and i saw her in riga right and i was going in the store and i thought oh she's still because uh, if she's still when i there when i come out i'll open her because the, the secret was that my friend I, I knew my friend is sleeping with her so i was like well if she's still there when i come out then this is destiny and then i have to i have to open oh so that's I'm coming. that's uh that's interesting so you kind of uh how how good a friend are we talking? Is it like uh, not not sneaky uh, if you do that? Or? No, no, he, he, I wouldn't do that if it was a good friend. It, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I, I wouldn't. I would only do that if I knew the friend was fine with that, and and I knew 100% that that guy would be totally fine with that. And he's a he bit of a care. yeah, he's a player himself, and that chick was just one of the girls. So right. I come out of this. I come out of the the store, and she's still there. She's standing there, being incredibly fucking beautiful. And I opened her and. Uh, actually, like a few hours later, we end up at we end up at uh, my place, and we end up with like a good makeout, but no lay. And and the next time we met, we I got delay. But I remember the, that that day when I met her for the first time, we were at my place, and I know oh I have to escalate physically. I, I know exactly what the next steps are, but as I'm doing them, my hands are shaking really? just because of how hot she. Oh, dude, like I couldn't like I had to like I know oh now I have to touch her leg. And I'm touching that leg, and I see, I look at my paw, like I, at my hand, and my hand is literally shaking. Ah, like, fuck. I kind of want to see how fucking what this girl looks like, man. She sounds like, was she Russian or Latvian or what? Uh, she was Latvian, but she was a proper, proper Instagram stunner, like incredible. Uh, One of the probably hottest girls that I've slept, but we slept a few times and I never saw her again because she was incredibly hot, but she was like pretty lazy in bed. And, and it's like, yeah, I'm done with this. Do you think there's a. Uh... In your experience with the sleep for with girls, do you think there's a correlation between the hotter the girl, the less good in bed she is because she's just a bit lazy because she's hot? Or you think that's a, not a correct thing to say? I think that's a stereotype guys say as one of the reasons not to go for the hottest girls. And, and but, but no, I actually don't see a correlation between hotness and how good the girl is in bed. I've, I've never seen that. Maybe actually... I wouldn't even say it's the opposite. I would say that I see zero correlation with hotness and how good she is in bed. Okay. Um, so obviously, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It sounds a bit cheesy and you're going to get nuances between girls. You know, some guy like I know loves like, you know, dark black girls who are a bit chunkier. Right. And that's really, really, really not my cup of tea. But he finds them very beautiful, whereas I tend to like more kind of, I guess, modely looking girls, blonde hair, blue eyes, something like this. Sounds yes. like you've got a. Sounds like your one of your kids has arrived, Robert. Um, your baby mama has arrived. One of my kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah in the that is a, 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 a how do you call them? A waiter talking something to other employees at the bar because I'm sitting at a beach bar in uh, in, in uh, Zicatela Beach in Porto Escondido, looking at the ocean as we speak, uh, and I'm recording this beautiful podcast. Very picturesque. About hot chicks. Very picturesque. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. So I guess first thing guys should be doing is actually fucking approaching the hot girls, right? Because if you're not putting yourself in the arena, you miss 100% of the shots you, you don't take. And one of the big mistakes guys make is thinking that, uh, for, for one of a better phrase, the six and sevens are easier to game than the really hot ones. In my experience, the super hot chicks you open, they tend to respond really well. And the reason for that is most of them, even if their self-esteem isn't great, 
you know, because you can't judge a woman's appearance, you know, it's not related to her self-esteem. I've met some very, very hot chicks who have actually quite low self-esteem, and I've met some not attractive chicks who have very high self-esteem, but um, girls have a very good perception of how blokes react to them, how guys react to them. So sometimes you get a super, super hot girl, well, often you get a super hot girl, and she knows it takes balls to come and speak to her because she knows most men, she's intimidatingly attractive, and they'll just fucking drop their eyes, and they won't even speak to her. So I think the first point to gaming the hotter girls, right, is actually fucking approaching them and not pushing out those opportunities. The ones that you see that scare the Jesus out of you, that you feel that kind of are, oh, you, you almost want to run away. Those are the ones you specifically must be opening, right? Yeah, and, and when I, I remember when I started, the, the hottest ones were the ones I was afraid to open. I, I sometimes chickened out, but uh, after a while, it, it it kind of flipped and now it's the other way around. If she's incredibly hot, whether I'm in the mood or I'm not in the mood, I'm in the right space, I have time or don't have time, I, I will open. I just cannot not open because I will remember not opening her. Mm. And I just I just have to go and, and I will wait for the moment. I will wait maybe for if it's like a lot like a specific i will i might even wait for the perfect opportunity like if she goes in a store that's like not ideal for opening i might even wait for like a minute or two before she walks out and i remember i was walking down one of the main day game streets in riga like maybe two years back i think two years back and i see mm -hmm. we have kempinski hotel one of the kind of top hotels in in riga and this mm -hmm. incredibly hot chick walks out really short white dress high heels blonde hair stunner and i'm just oh my god i cannot she's so hot but i know that i can't also not open her <laughs> yeah so i go in and i open her and she lights up and and she loves it she doesn't take off her sunglasses and like two minutes in a set, I say, you didn't take off your sunglasses, so I'm going to I'm going to guess that you either have a really bad hangover or you just did a lot of coke. And she just looks at me and she says, well, what if I told you both are true? Uh, really? That was her response. Yeah. Yeah, and, and she had this shoulder bag and I look in the shoulder bag and there is a dress and shoes. Right, and she sees me, and it's like five, seven, maybe even more minutes in, into into the set, and and she sees me looking at that shoulder bag, and I look at it, and she looks at me, and she just says, "Don't, don't even say that. Shut the fuck up. Don't even say that." And I just look at her. Oh, this is a walk of shame. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. And it and it was because it was like noon in the morning, like so it was noon. So she just walked out of the hotel after banging some guy. So. That, that, that was a fucking hilarious open and a great set that didn't end anywhere. She didn't respond to the text, but it just it just it just went amazingly. And and one thing about opening really really hot girls is uh, especially if they're like really really top shelf. Oh, they're making some margaritas right next to me. It's okay. It just sounds like uh, there's heavy rain, but we can get past no, it. No, no, it's margaritas. So what Raining I margaritas. sometimes will do, what I uh -huh. sometimes will do is it depends on kind of like a mood thing. I don't have like a logic behind it when I do that and when I don't. But one of the things I, I do, sometimes I will stack with a bit of an egg. Not often, but sometimes I'll do maybe like one out of 10 times. I'll say something, hey, I know this is random, but I just thought you looked very cute. I had to say hi. And uh, But what I noticed about you, you had this crazy, crazy resting bitch face. Right. Okay. And I'll see how they react. And, and actually, what I've noticed is if you say this stuff to a girl that's kind of average looking, mm -hmm. she definitely doesn't appreciate it. She gets pretty angry. But if you right. say this to a really hot girl, she actually usually starts laughing and responds very, very good to, to, a, to a stack like that. Well, I think a lot of them, a lot of the very, very, again, we're generalizing a lot here, but I hope guys can kind of understand where we're coming from. I think when you get very beautiful women, they're not necessarily used to being teased. They used to like the odd, odd guy coming up and bumbling his way through some like, oh, you're beautiful lines and blushing and not being able to fucking control himself because we're triggered by the visual. But yeah, if you can kind of act cool and calm and, and just come up and like banter with her and tease her, that's very refreshing for a, a very attractive woman because she doesn't necessarily get that much. So I think yeah. that's probably why if you can open with a bit of a tease and be more playful, that's going to set you apart. I remember for me, it, I think it takes reference points as well, because I remember for me, it sounds like, <laughs> it sounds like there's a, a truck backing up into your 
some fucking yeah there is a truck backing up on the street right next to me uh well mexico mexico okay. podcasting man i i did record a video like right on the beach the other day so and, and sure. you can hear like the ocean and the birds and, and all the crazy shit in the video we'll just, we'll just pretend that it's something sexy instead of a lorry backing up with a pile of rubbish in the front. Um, it, it's it's one of those black girls that you that you were talking about she's <laughs> back twer- twerking her ass backwards and, yeah, and it's so big and so juicy that there is a sound effect added to it that's amazing um, i remember for me one of the big reference experiences getting into this was you know sleeping with a girl who was incredibly uh, beautiful and looking back on it it was about three months since me learning day game in london she was a polish girl she was something strange like Miss Club Poland called Angelika or Magie. Um, very, very attractive girl in her prime. She was 21, 22, very low sausage count um, and just, just, just hot. But I remember stopping her on Oxford Street. And she responded super well to it. You know, me being direct masculine, took her an instant date. Looking back on it, I mean, I didn't have a fucking clue what I was doing in the dating process. I didn't sleep with her till the third date, but I was fucking clueless, man. I was winging it. Like she just liked me and, and after I slept with her, I was like, fuck me. This is what day game's all about in the sense that I'd never gone near a girl remotely as beautiful as that before. You know, she was she was the she was so hot that I was walking into places and not only were the guys like just jaw drawers dropping, but women were just like they didn't even they couldn't it was past that stage of them call, calling her like a slut or whatever. They because they were just so stunned by how what she looked like. Like she was just a, an eye stopper. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not the worst looking guy yeah. either. So us walking in together to a place that like would stop shit. Um, but it was like, fuck, every time I, I dated her for about two months and every time I saw her again, it would like, it would reset. And I would just be like, take like three or four minutes to get my shit together. Cause it, she was that intimidatingly good looking. Um, but actually a really sweet girl, like just a normal cool girl, you know, bit of a princess in the sense that her dad had quite a bit of money. Um, but just a normal, cool girl, you know, just a, a nice girl. And I think really what we want to get to the stage of with, uh, with game is, is, is I think guys who really get game, they act the same around a 10 as they act around a one. They don't get intimidated or flustered by the looks, right? By beauty, because that yeah. is, that is the kryptonite, right? We are, we are built to be, to react viscerally to a girl who's in our prime age wise, who's got a great set of tits, who's got a beautiful body, who's got a beautiful face. We can't help but get triggered by that because that's what we kind of want the most, right? So I think when you spend a lot of time around hot girls, you go to places like Russia, like Ukraine, like Belarus, like Brazil with a high quantity of hot women. It's great because quickly you you, you desensitize yourself to beauty and then you start acting like normal around these girls. And obviously the good thing about going to places like, for example, Kiev or Odessa, where every girl is fucking hot, is they act normal. It's not like you find a stunner in London, right? And she knows she's a stunner, so she has an attitude. It's like if you go to somewhere like Kiev or Moscow where everyone's like a seven or an eight, then the girls just act normal because beauty is not a commodity. And so, yeah, there's no need for them to be super arrogant, right? Um, Yeah, that's one of the things I've actually noticed that hot girls are sometimes nicer because they know they're hot and they don't have to prove anything. and, And... Whereas sometimes the girls that aren't the hottest, they sometimes aren't like there's, I think I've had more weird girls that are not the hottest than, than the really hot ones. Yeah. G5. I, I mean, I had this crazy experience where I met this girl who's like a small town, small town Ukrainian girl, right? I met her in a small town in Ukraine and where I met her, she's very sweet and innocent. She's surrounded by lots of hot women. She very like just normal, cool, relaxed girl. She actually moved to London and I met her a year later after she'd been living in London for seven months and she was a fucking out. She was an asshole. She had developed an ego because she'd realized being in London that she was like fucking a nine compared to like everyone else. Like she was just so much more beautiful. And so she developed an attitude. And then I, so I met her there. I was like, fucking hell, she's changed. Like it wasn't good. And then ironically, I saw her again a year later when she moved back to her small town in Ukraine and she'd gone back to being normal again. So yeah. depending on the environment, you know, the girl's attitude can change as well, which is a big thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of getting away from the topic, I, I guess, a bit. But is there anything you would be doing differently or any mistakes guys make, actually, you know, around, I guess, quote unquote, beautiful girls or anything they should be focused on doing, some practical stuff they can apply? 
Yeah, I think uh, a few things. Guys get kind of carried away by how hot the girl is, and uh, sometimes they are so kind of, I don't even know how to describe it, but so, so surprised by that. They forget that the set has to be a normal set. They still have to challenge her a little bit. They still have to make her qualify a little bit. They still have to build comfort. It's, it's, you still have to do all of those things. And, and they're in a way more important with hotter girls because they will get some compliments here and there. But they will not have like a full on uh, good conversations with guys because just because guys do the teasing part or whatever, but they don't don't kind of challenge them, don't make them qual- qualify, forget to ground and, and build the comfort. So you have to do all parts of the conversations like it, you shouldn't forget about that. Um, yeah, I think that's a good point. And also just treating them differently, thinking that they're special you should i mean for me i always try and sleep with a girl fast and i i made this mistake recently in mexico city i went on a date with a very very hot venezuelan woman uh for those guys who haven't really come across venezuelans before i'd say they are the hottest women in south america they're beautiful they're also very charismatic so they're they're a perfect combination and, and always the hottest girls i meet in mexico or colombia or venezuelan but i yeah i i made that mistake i went i treated it differently um and i didn't push for it um knowing that i was leaving um i kind of forgot forgot myself a bit because of her looks and you know in hindsight it was a terrible move i treated her differently based on how she looked whereas the process is always you know trying to for me it's escalate on them quickly take them home and try and get them into bed um and i went up that's the big thing yeah yeah and i went away from that process and the only reason i went away from that process is I, i made the mistake of treating her differently because she's young and beautiful with a great body and it shouldn't have been done and in hindsight, you know, you kick yourself, but it's only myself to blame. So, yeah, don't treat them differently. Don't play the girl, uh, depending on the girl, have a beautiful wish. Play the game. You know, always do the same. Obviously, calibrate, right? So some go- not all girls are going to, you, you go on the date and you kiss them quickly and take them home. But you know, obviously, calibrate that situation. But don't change what you're up to because the girl is good looking. Don't start, yeah, acting overly nice or forgetting to tease or forgetting the seduction process because of how she looks. It's even more important you stick to it because your emotion is going to be kind of out and about, you know, you're going to be a bit more emotionally all over the show because you're, you are, in, you know, not intimidated by the looks, but you're affected by how she looks. That's normal. And it's good to, it's, it's, you need to stick to the game plan, don't you? And not get carried away, not get sidetracked. Yeah, it's, it, it also come, like, it's also about texting. You have to still follow the same, uh, uh, you have to remember about the texting rules and, and guys that sometimes just respond too fast, respond too needy, uh, just because she's so hot and they date request them too fast or date request too many times in a row or don't build enough comfort over texting when it's necessary. Just because she was too hot and, and uh, it's just, yeah, that's one of the big mistakes. Uh, texting, for sure. Uh, and also, I think, one of the things when when gaming really hot girls you have to understand or guys have to understand that uh, they have a lot of followers on instagram and if you are closing with instagram then that's basically you're you're done you fucked up the set it's i wouldn't even call call it a, a close if, if a guy closes, closes a really hot girl with instagram because she has so many followers so many guys in the, in their dms the only way to close them is to get to get the number and if they're going for the instagram no go for the number you, you really have to do that if she doesn't give you the number face the, instagram is not going to give you a, give you anything not going to get you anywhere so the only way to close a hot girl is with the number yeah i agree um any other kind of mistakes guys make or, or other things we should be discussing when it comes to the, the hotter girls um well, you, you, if they've been more around guys, then their game is going to be better. They're probably going to do some more frame tests, more shit tests. That's definitely something to expect. So they, ha- they have to know when to ignore that, when to agree and amplify, when to call her out on, on her bullshit, when to flip the script. So they have to be pretty calibrated with that. Like, don't just fail the fail the frame tests it's definitely not a not a not a good thing to do but an, an interesting thing is when guys think about those really hot girls uh if you date them for a while you probably will see them one day 
in their apartment in a sweatshirt, in a, in a sweatpants, in in a in an old T-shirt with with dirty hair. And if you see them like that one day, you realize that they're just average people. They're normal people that look beautiful. But sometimes you look at them and you're like, oh, what the fuck is this shit? The fuck? Why the fuck are you looking like that? And it's important to remember they're normal people. They're not unicorns or or they're not more like in, extremely special or, or something like that. I completely agree. They're born looking a certain way. And, you know, you just got to realize that the, the more uh, remember as well that the more time you spend around a girl, however beautiful she is initially, the more her beauty will wear off on you. So just be consciously aware that the first uh, minute, the first five minutes, the first hour you meet a girl, you're going to be more overwhelmed by how she looks. But as you get used to her, it's the whole analogy of show me the most beautiful girl in the world. and I'll show you a guy bored of fucking her. It's true. You know, men, we crave variety. And however hot the girl seems at the beginning, she is only human, you know, she didn't do anything really to warrant looking like that, apart from maybe her dad had a bit of money or he was a player and he hooked up with an attractive, you know, wife, hence why she's attractive. But yeah, it's, it's very important to just get past the, vis the visual and just start to think, right, what else has she got? Obviously, if I'm a high value guy, it's a prerequisite that I'm dating a beautiful woman. But what else is there beyond that? And if you can kind of screen girls for uh, and qualify girls for stuff you actually look for in women, which you should know what these things are, because if you're dating a woman, it's important to know what type of women you like. Do you like high drama women, low drama women, intelligent women, extroverted women, introverted women, women who travel, women who like to read, whatever, women who are into sport. You should know this shit. If you don't know this shit, go on more dates and figure it out. But you should screen women, especially beautiful women, for these things, because that's going to come across to them as very high value. They're used to men bending over backwards for them, purely based on their looks. And if you can differentiate yourself through actually figuring out what she's about and seeing if you guys are going to get on. She's going to really, really respect that. And you're going to put yourself in a completely different category. Another thing to, to just, uh, while it's on my mind, what I was finding is when I was beginning this journey and I didn't really know what I was doing with the day game, I was finding that when I stopped very beautiful women, it was almost like worse than getting blown out. It was kind of like, oh, honey, thanks for coming to give me the compliment. But you're not even in her league, you know. She's just seeing you as, like, not even in her league. And it's, like, kind of almost, like, pitying, like, oh, nice, nice work, little boy. Like, ruffle you on the head. Like, off you go. And it's fucking, it's fucking soul, it's soul destroying, man. It's fucking, you go away, like, oh, fuck me. I'm not, like, she just, she's not even, like, seeing me as a real person. It's just kind of, like, almost a little bit of self-pity, you know. So I think guys, what, what, got, what I see guys is with very useful women to begin with, they're not particularly bitchy. They're just like, they don't even test you. They're just, if you don't know what you're doing, they're just like, oh, you know, what a nice, sweet thing to do. But they're not taking you seriously as a sexual proposition. And that can actually be more soul destroying at the beginning. They're getting a hard blow up. Um, but that's just part of the game, you know, and that just means you have to work on your technique and work on your value as a guy. Maybe you're doing this and you're a super young guy as well. The woman's a bit older and she, she thinks it's cute, but she's not taking it seriously. Um, what else? Anything else to add? Well, I think this, the, the thing you just said, it, 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 there are some places in the world that I've been to where this is especially true. And there, they sometimes will look at you as, as uh, uh, like, uh, they will you not even look at you and just walk around you and as if you were like a street dog or something. But the important thing there is uh, it, it teaches you a lot. And you can get laid even in those places. And if your game is good enough, it, it isn't about them being like that. It's just they know your game isn't good enough. When your weak was your your open was too weak and your your stop your stop was too weak and your opener was bad, your voice wasn't where it should be. And there are like a lot of a lot of lot of small mistakes you're making in your day game. Mm -hmm. And if you're making them, you will maybe that is the, the thing with with average girls being a bit easier like they will be more forgiving about those things like like some some weak mistakes in game like voice and posture and all the other basics like a, a, an average chick will will kind of look past that whereas a hottie will see right through it and she'll be like yeah okay you're done dude like thank you and, and she will just walk off yeah so you just have you need tighter game i agree and i was actually getting found out a lot um in the early stages, I was good at the party trick of 10 minutes of, of street, you know, clownery or for want of a better phrase, like understanding day game to a degree. But 
I didn't have any value behind me, right? So all I was doing was running around the street doing day game. And and when when I was on dates with girls, I like they were like, "What do you do in your spare time?" I didn't I didn't actually do anything else, right? So I had to fucking make shit up. So that was a wake up call for me. But um, learning this process, I believe, is four 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 areas you have to learn: the day game, the texting, so converting those numbers into dates, the actual dating process, so how to go on there and and show that you're a confident, you know, guy who can get laid, basically verbally and physically escalate, take the girl home. Than relationship management. So what I was doing, I was good at the day game and the texting part, but then I was getting beautiful girls on dates and they're seeing straight through me because I had no value, right? And I didn't know what I was doing. So I remember this one time, especially like this Finnish girl, she was a Finnish model, very tall, beautiful looking girl, stopped her in London. Alarm bells were ringing straight away because I set up the date in my house and she changed the venue. And like a good little innocent, uh, you know, boy, I went along with her new suggestion of this high-end bar in Mayfair which cost about 35 pounds a cocktail. So that was a bad start. <laughs> and I went along, yeah. it's called, for those of you who know, it's it's a place off uh, Regent Street called Sketch. It's a, it's a very nice place, but fuck, it's not the sort of place you want to go for a first date if you want to save money, you know? And and also the fact she's changing the logistics of where, where to go. And I was going along with it was not a good sign because she should really be following your lead to a, to a large degree. But anyway, I remember going along there, sitting next to her on the sofa and about... 90 minutes into the date she turned to me and she she took both my hands in her hand and she was like james this is amazing i feel so comfortable around you it feels like i've known you forever You're like such a good friend and being completely clueless at the time i was thinking oh yeah this is great but obviously it's a terrible sign you know it's like she's fucking friends on me i don't know what the fuck i'm doing and i remember walking outside at the end having paid like a 70 pound bill and then i tried to kiss her and she was like oh no no honey what are you doing you know, we're, we're, we're best friends now. And I was like, oh, my <laughs> God, for fuck's sakes. So that was a big wake-up call. It's like, right, I, I'm so the day game stuff. Now I've got to work on the fucking date stuff. But that was uh, frustrating, right? It can be frustrating because you're getting on dates with some very, very good-looking women, but they're almost not taking you seriously. So, again, it's just you have to work on yourself. You have to work on your value. You've got to remember as well, like, day game is a great hack. Cold approach is a great hack to, to get girls. You know, if she's got 10 girls messaging on, you know, on Tinder – 40 girls messaging her on Instagram, blah, blah, blah. You are going to stand out being the guy who comes up to her in the coffee shop and tells her she's beautiful and you understand how to run games. So she feels a certain way and she's invested and she tells her friends and she has this amazing kind of movie moment, right? You're going to stand out. But at the end of the day, guys forget, you're still fucking competing with the, all these other men that she has access to, right? A beautiful 21-year-old girl in her prime, she has fucking options, so it's no good just having the day game stuff, right? As your little trick, you have to have inherent value behind that. And if you want the woman, you want to bring the girl into your reality, fuck, you've got to have some serious value because she's going to have a lot of options. She's going to have guys offering to fly around the world, offering her to buy her shit. You know, she's going to have men at her beck and call. So you have to understand this stuff inside out. You have to be living in attractive reality. You have to have your other shit on point. To, to to be able to see her again. And that's that's something that, again, we can go into another time, but something to bear in mind for guys. You have to be fucking living. You've got to be walking the walk. You've got to be talking the talk, you know? I think there are two points worth mentioning from what you just said, worth uh, kind of emphasizing. One is if, if a girl, and other girls will do that more often than, than regular ones, like choosing the menu and trying to take the, like seeing whether they can take the frame. Uh, yeah, never go with that. Uh, if they won't agree with the venue, I suggest even like when they try to change it, I, I will like I will not go on a date actually. I'll okay. Just, I'll just play because like because like oh fuck you like uh, if if you want to control the frame frame so much, I would I would just not go regardless of how hot she is. I would just understand okay this is it it's her frame I don't want to do that and I will. Well, you're trying to reframe it. You're trying to reframe it first, right? Of course, of course. I will try everything else, but then I said, oh, sorry, like, uh, I can't make it (coughs) after all, and I'll flake, and then I'll text her a few days later, ping a bit more, date request again, and then see whether she comes out or not. Right. And uh, and it's fine. Sometimes they do that, and sometimes when they see they can't get the frame, they will actually not go out with you. And that just proves one thing. They wanted something from you. They wanted that restaurant. They wanted that those cocktails in the, in the fancy place, or they wanted the dinner, and and them not agreeing to your frame. It just you see that oh they they aren't really after you. They don't like you. They just want the the lifestyle. They want the beautiful things, and you have to understand that a lot of girls will have 
very different dating strategies depending on whether they're looking at you as a guy that will buy them things or a guy they'll bang. Yes. And it's very, very different. So you have to make sure you are the guy they'll bang instead of guy who will take them on dinners and, and then they'll make you wait and, and go on several dates and, and it's just a big mess. Yes, that's a very good point. Um, any other nuances for the date itself? No, I think I don't think there's anything different on a date with uh, with uh, with a girl that's like just treat her like everyone else. I mean, push her yeah. away. Remember to do that push pull on off. <coughs> remember all the basics and just that's it. I would actually say that's it. Take her to a shitty bar. <laughs> yeah, don't don't do what the fucking majority of dudes do. Who, if they yeah. they're lucky enough that they feel like they're lucky enough to snag this fucking hottie out on a date do the whole fucking ridiculously over the top thing acting a different way because she's hot take you to this five star place again you're just shooting yourself in the fucking face you almost want to go the other way and downplay it and just show that you see her as a completely normal girl and she's jumping into your lifestyle and if you like fucking dive bars then she's going to hang out at a fucking dive bar with you you know um yeah. start changing the location to try and impress her i think that's a big thing actually thinking about it it's guys changing to impress the girl because they think the more beautiful it, that she is, the more they need to impress her. But it's got to be the opposite, because every fucking chump that doesn't get this is trying to do that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, anything else on this topic? I, I think these are like the most basics guys have to know. And I think if we go deeper into that, it's just going to be a too much information. And, and that's yeah. it. Were there any, uh, any kind of reference experiences or cool stories you have of kind of... Um, yeah, epiphany moments when you dated hot girls. You know what's the biggest epiphany? Even the hottest girls sometimes have self-esteem issues. Massively, they, like, massively. There's a, there's, a, there's a myth that the hotter the girl, the, the higher her self-esteem. I'd say it's not true at all. If anything, she's going to be because she sits on top of the totem pole. And, you know, she's super worried about what other people think, you know, because she's got a lot more to lose. So I, I would not relate yes. to you. I, I don't think it's true. It's not, like not at a all. lot of women. A yeah. lot of women think the same the other way around. They think if a guy is extremely good looking, he has incredible self esteem. That's not also not true. So women get it wrong the other way around as well. But yeah, so let's expand a little bit on your uh, on, on what you were saying about the self esteem and, and beauty. When when did that when did that kind of epiphany happen, or was there a particular incident where you were like, I'm oh, just, shit. no, there are like girls that, <coughs> Russian girls that I've dated that have been incredible, and, and they would just, like, they would be these super hot girls, but, but sometimes when you have a real talk with them, you, you know they're, they know they're fucking hot, like, they know that. But they're also normal human beings that have their kind of that are fragile and sensitive and, and they have their insecurities and, and that's what makes it beautiful that's what makes the connection beautiful that you don't just see the hotness but you see them for for who they are she might be this super super hot russian but then she basically calls you and and begs to come over and says i don't even want you to fuck me i just want you to i just want you to give you a blowjob and, and go away I just want to chat you with you a little bit and you're like what that's you're a this great incredible hottie. Yeah. You shouldn't be. You shouldn't be acting like that. And that's yeah. that's what happens. Like a lot. And that's that's what happens with the hottest of them. I, I, I see this more with extremely hot girls than than any anyone else. Yeah. Do you think? Um, what are some quick tips for guys to use? Practical applications if they are overwhelmed by by beauty that they should um, they should think about um, if they want to kind of almost bring down the girl in their own view. Because well, right how hot she is. Yeah. What I do is when I am in a whatever bar, I would go to the bathroom, I would look in a mirror and I would think, okay, dude, where are you on the model? What is the next thing you should do on this date? What is, should you escalate verbally? Should you escalate physically? Should you see it? Should you go to the next venue? And it's very, very scary if she's very hot. So I would consciously think what's the next step and I would go back and I would do that next step, regardless of how scared I would feel. That's the biggest tip I can give, I think. Yeah, and for me, it sounds like kind of cringing, but honestly, like thinking of a girl, uh, thinking, picturing the hot girl in a very uh, not pleasant scenario usually works pretty well. So imagining her like on her knees, fucking throwing up horribly on the ground or taking a mat. <laughs> take, honestly, it sounds ridiculous, but taking a massive dump, curling one out. It's, it sounds <laughs> fucking ridiculous, but it's true, man. Like you picture that girl, don't care how hot she is, you picture her like, you know, spewing up all over herself or, 
you know, curling out a fucking massive dump, you know, with this squint on her face. And it brings her right down to human level. So Yeah, I've heard a lot of people do that. It does, man. It, it, it sounds fucking stupid, but it's a great way of, uh, you know, for some reason, I think we have this tendency to just assume very hot women don't shit, or, shit and piss. Like, we just don't want to you think know, about I, it. Right? I've tried it. I've tried it, but then I'm disgusted by the image and I don't want to fuck them anymore. <laughs> it, you are disgusted. It's horrifying, the image, but you know what? Fuck, it really works, man. If you really want to, like... If you do find the girl overwhelmingly attractive, just having that, that would be my little cheat, cheat sheet tip to just have in the back of your, your wardrobe just to be like, fuck, okay, mental wardrobe to be like, right, okay, yeah, yeah, actually, shit, she doesn't seem so good anymore, you know? Um, <laughs> but yeah, you don't want to dwell on that image too much because it might put you off <laughs> entirely. Def- definitely. Yeah. What a note to end on. Anything else? Uh, <coughs> I think I think that that's that's it. That's, that's all guys have to know and just... Most important thing is when you see that girl that's too hot to open, go open her. That's a story you can tell your wings. That's something you can be proud of that you finally did it. And after a while, it stops from being scared. If something you're scared to do from something that you cannot not do because they are so hot, you cannot not approach. So just the, approach yeah, the hottest I girls com- around I you. completely agree. And you can use your, your body as a thermometer. The more you have that fight or flight response when you walk past a girl, I think Nick Krauser a guy who I learned some stuff from, Date London Day Game guy, talks about it. He calls it the DNA tug. But the more you feel that kind of fright, fight or flight response, you know, with it, where you see a stunner, the more you should be opening that girl. Because, you know, that's your body saying, fucking open her, you know, because you never feel it around a fat girl, right? But when you see your 10 walk past, you fucking feel it in your bones. And that's where you need to fucking man up and, and take the action. And you know what? Even if it doesn't work out, you feel fucking good because you knew you knew that was why you fucking got into this game in the first place to approach those oh, yes. women and if you're oh, not yes. if you're not approaching those kind of women you're fucking lying to yourself you're doing the standard thing of doing day game which is uncomfortable but you're sitting within a comfort zone in day game we're getting meta level now but it does happen very easy to get within a comfort zone even though day game is inherently uncomfortable so yeah remember to push yourself into those hottest girls they're always the most rewarding to date and sleep with there's no way around it so dear church is now you know Open the hottest girls because that's where the best stories come from. And as I said in the beginning, if you are in Switzerland or if you want to come to Serbia and get some day game coaching, send me an email as soon as possible to robert at strobert.blog and I'll send you all the details. If you listen to this podcast on uh, YouTube, then please give this podcast a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or if, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, give this podcast a five-star review, tell guys what you think about it. And if it's on Spotify, then just click follow. All of these things simply help me put this podcast more out there and help me reach more people and help more guys learn to date girls they actually like. Thank you for listening. That's it for today. Goodbye, guys.